What's good, YouTube? Hey, we back with part three of our rip series. In this series, we're gonna go over what is a switch, what are VLANs, and we're gonna configure them. Before we get started, um, I gotta say RIP to Prodigy. I know you rest in heaven, and I appreciate all the music that you made for hip hop. I'm a Mob D fan, so I just had to get that out the way. Now that we're in part three, where I get into the point to where it's time to start configuring our devices. So I created um, all the configurations for the routers and switches. They are all over here. They are in the background of Packet Tracer. So you'll see them throughout the rest of the series. So you'll know what IP address corresponds to it. what. Okay, well, we're gonna talk about right now is this device right here. This is a switch. Switches operate at layer two of the OSI model, which is the data link layer. Switches create networks, routers connect networks. Again, switches create networks and routers connect networks. Switches learn, filter, forward, and flood ethernet frames. And they do this by using MAC addresses. That's something you should always remember that when you're dealing with a switch, you're operating that layer two, they're using frames and they're communicating strictly off the MAC address, not IP addresses. So make sure you're keeping, you're keeping that in mind when you're going into your CCNA exams, your network plus, or even on your networks when you're in live environments. And just remember that um, routers operate at layer three and switches operate at layer two. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is collision domains. Now, each port on a ethernet switch or a router is its own collision domain. So when you're preparing for your ICND1, ICND2, if they ask you about collision domains, know that if a device is connected to a switch in between that device or in that switch is one collision domain. So if we look here at our network, We'll go over all the collision domains. There's one here, there's one here, one here, one here. And, the, and if you notice, they're all connected. It's his own collision domain. And now I'm gonna go a little di bit deeper and give you the background on this. Previously, in ethernet environments, you had hubs. So what a hub would do is connect all these different devices, but they will all talk at the same exact time. So you will operate at what half duplex because you will have to wait for somebody to send a packet before you can send your packet. So, and that's how hubs work. So everybody's talking at the same time. So like if you're in a room with a group of people and everybody's talking at once, you're not gonna understand anything. And that's pretty much how hubs operated. Now, switches are different. They are smart enough to do simultaneous communication seamlessly um, by using ASIC switching. That's a little deeper, but we're not gonna go into that. Just know that whenever you're dealing with a switch, um, each port is its own collision domain. Now, we got that out the way. The, the next thing we need to discuss, the reason why I went over the collision domains is because I wanna talk to you about broadcast domains. What are broadcast domains? VLANs, ha <laughs> ha, virtual local area networks. So a VLAN is basically a broadcast domain, a subnet, a segment of your network, um, yeah, it's pretty simple. So on this switch, we're going to have, on this switch here, we're going to have three VLANs. We're going to have VLAN 10, 20, and 30. Now, routers connect networks, but they do not forward broadcast. So in other words, in order for two VLANs to communicate, you have to have some sort of routing in order for them to communicate. 
because inside a switch with no routing you if something's in let's say VLAN 10 over here VLAN 10 in this switch is only going to communicate with VLAN 10 without routing in other words VLAN 10 in this switch here is its own broadcast domain so everything inside of VLAN 10 or every inside of VLAN 10 broadcast domain can communicate it gets deeper okay so you have switch 1 here and VLAN 10 are both in on switch 1 so that's VLAN 10 broadcast domain that's what a virtual local area network it, phys it virtually separates physical networks even though these are in the same devices all four of these PCs all four PCs here are plugged into the switch only the ones in the same VLAN can communicate if there's no routing set up basically so VLAN 10 could connect to VLAN 10 and then 20 couldn't talk to anyone and 30 couldn't talk to anyone since there's no routing configured at the moment now if these two switches were connected together let's say by an access port or a trunk port let's say a trunk port let's call this uh, 802.1q now we'll go over this later we're not going to discuss this now 802.1q so this is a trunk port 802.1q which is ieee standard blah 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 we'll discuss all that later but anyway switch one is connected to switch two by a trunk now we have VLAN 10 on switch one these two PCs here in VLAN 10 and then we have VLAN 10 here they could communicate because they're both in the same broadcast domain switches when they're connected together the broadcast domain extends so if we plug in another switch that's connected and they're all connected and they all have VLAN 10 created on them VLAN 10 just will keep going now that's a problem you want to limit that that's the point of creating routers creating separate VLANs and segmenting your network so you can limit the size of your broadcast domains the larger your broadcast domains the more problems you will have in your network the more issues you will have with traffic now we got all that squared away I think I pretty much cover everything you need to know about switches and VLANs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, hit the comment section below. Peace.